Hello and welcome. I'm so pleased to be here with the Oberlin Conservatory Composition Department, composers Jesse Jones, Stephen Hartke, and Elizabeth Oganek. I'm so glad you're here with us. Stephen, could you tell us a little bit about this collaboration that we have? Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, one of the most important parts of our program is uh, having regular readings and performances of our students' works. Um, thanks in, to enormous extent to the cooperation of Tim and, and his colleague, Rafael Jimenez, who in this year, this unusual year, have gone above and beyond the call of duty in arranging for um, actually polished performances that are recorded of the pieces by some of our first and second year students. I teach the, uh, the first year seminar and in the first semester um, of the first year, uh, the composers are tasked uh, in the second half of the semester with writing a suite uh, which we define as a collection of four movements um, connected by a, a single conceptual thread. And this year, um, the composers did a wonderful job uh, writing for flute, oboe, clarinet, violin, and cello. So you'll hear seven works by the first year composers for that instrumentation. All right, and I teach uh, the second year seminar where um, I have actually three composers um, writing works for flute, clarinet, trumpet, violin, viola, and cello. As composers, we often get asked to write eight minute pieces, eight to 10 minute pieces. And that's the task we give our second year composers. And those are the works you'll hear today. There's so much richness and diversity with the styles that each of them writes with. And it's a testament to your mentorship that you inspire them to find their own voice. But each of these pieces is so finely crafted. It's really been a pleasure to work on them. And it's been a joy for the performers as well. So get ready. This is a wonderful, long event of great first listens to new works. Thanks for your collaboration. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Hello, my name is Rolando Gomez, and I'm a second year at Oberlin Conservatory. Today, you'll be listening to my piece, Choo Choo. As the title implies, the piece is about a choo choo train. I dedicated this piece to my three-year-old nephew, who is absolutely fascinated by them. I originally wrote the piece during the summer for solo violin as part of Yellow Barnes Young Artist Program. Then. Over the fall, I decided to rewrite it for a larger ensemble, in this case, a sextet. I hope you enjoy this musical journey on this choo-choo train.
I'm Jacob Richter, and you're about to hear my suite, Amusement Park, for flute, oboe, clarinet, violin, and cello. First, you'll hear the movement Welcome, which is about the sense of wonder one feels when they first set foot within a park. The next movements take you on rides within the park, a roller coaster, a Ferris wheel, a train, a carousel, and bumper cars, in that order. The connections between the rides and the music should mostly be identifiable, but I'll give you a hint for the Ferris wheel. Listen to how the music starts and stops just as the ride does when loading and unloading its passengers. The last movement, Fireworks, recasts themes from the first movement against the background of a nighttime spectacle, bookending an eventful day at the park.
This piece is essentially a set of miniatures uh, based on a very simple theme, which you'll fully hear in the first movement, the middle movement, and the last movement, um, and here in various fragments in the other movements. The theme begins with an ascending D major arpeggio, and then finishes with a descending D major scale. Uh, the idea of the ascent and the descent is also very important to the overall structure of the piece, so it's written in nine movements, uh, each one for a slightly different subset of the ensemble. So the first movement is for solo cello, and the last is for solo flute. And then each successive movement as you move towards the middle has one additional instrument. So that only in the fifth movement, which is right in the center, is the whole quintet actually playing at the same time. I uh, hope you enjoy the piece and the performance. It's been so fun working with all these great musicians.
Hello everyone! My name is Graham Lazarchak, and I'm a first-year composition student here at Oberlin. When I first set out to write this piece, I knew that I wanted to explore as many different textures and combinations of instruments as possible. The music that resulted had this shifting, kaleidoscopic quality that really appealed to me, and as I developed some of my ideas more, I started to embrace that metaphor of the kaleidoscope, looking through it at some strange collection of objects, maybe in an antique shop or an art gallery, and getting these quick glimpses that shift into one another. And this ultimately gave rise to the title of the piece, which is an implausible assemblage of lost artifacts. There are a few through lines that connect the different movements together. One of them is the clarinet, which holds a prominent role in several of the movements, and bookends the piece as a whole with these extended solos. Each movement has its own motifs and particular ideas, but there is one melody that pervades the music in its entirety, and that is a fiddle tune called the Whistler of Rose Lee. The tune gets a full overt setting in the fourth and final movement, but it shows up much earlier in more subtle ways. So, if you're so inclined, I encourage you to listen and see if you can pick up on some of those earlier references.
Hello, my name is Cashel Day-Lewis and I'm a composition major here at Oberlin Conservatory in my first year. Cobblestone Suite is among the first music I have written that actively incorporates elements of Irish traditional music, the other being my flute concerto on the Sea of Moyle. Each movement in Cobblestone Suite is based on a traditional Irish dance form, either real or of my own invention. Thus, each movement contains elements specific to a particular form. For example, the first movement, a strathspey, is in cut time and uses the Scotch snap figure. The third movement is my own nightmare Frankenstein of the Barden dance and waltz forms. The tempo and meter suggest a waltz, but a more rustic, more chromatic harmonic language brings in the barn. Throughout the piece, I use heterophony as a means of conveying what happens when two musicians play a tune together but no different versions, often determined by region of origin. Concerning ornamentation in Cobblestone Suite, I have used it somewhat sparingly, often opting to show ornaments through dissonances on the strong beats. For me, there is only so much, though, that can be written down and translated thoroughly and accurately. The rest is up to the Kjoltri Duchish, the traditional musicians.
My name is Jake Barron, and I'm one of the first-year composers at Oberlin. The piece that I've written for this performance is entitled COVID Suite, and I thought I would share a couple of thoughts that I had while writing it. So one of my main objectives with this piece was to make it almost like a drama, with the five instruments as five different characters, and the clarinet is treated as the first person. This objective sort of held throughout my whole creative process, but what it ended up as is more like a shift where the first movements are based around this individualized storytelling from the clarinet's perspective, and they are characterized by loneliness and conflict and dissonant harmonies and generally just disjointed orchestration. And as the piece progresses, it becomes more cohesive and unified, and there are more tonal or modal harmonies that are sound prettier, at least to me. And in the fifth movement, I actually use the number five a lot in different musical elements to represent the unity among the five instruments. So they are almost, they've almost like become a third person storyteller that's telling of their own triumph. And in terms of the larger meaning of this music, I wanted to convey a sense of hope because someday we'll be able to all get together physically and socialize and like the end of the the end of the suite sort of represents that light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but I also wanted to make it like a call that we have to come together and work on solving something like a global pandemic together in order to reach that light. And in that sense, the progression from the extremely dissonant beginning of the piece to the very pretty and um, consonant ending only happens through all of the little shifts that happen and the instruments taking steps toward uh, a collective effort to reach that point. So I thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoy the COVID suite.
Hi, my name is Isaac Santos, and I'm a composer currently living and studying here at my second year in the Oberlin Conservatory of Music. I wrote what could have been in the fall of 2020. I think it's suffice to say that we all have faced our fair share of tumultuous experiences from, from this year. Um, from a raging global pandemic to unending civil unrest. My own experiences were very difficult and really challenged the way I saw things in my life. It made me question what things could have been like had I done things differently if what has happened didn't. Alas, we have yet to be able to discover how to travel back in time. So I came to the conclusion that it's best to internalize these experiences, to reflect on them and to just move on with life. Um, I guess this piece you could say is an outward introspection of those thoughts.